so uh, I, I love this one um, uh, because um, anytime I'm, I'm teaching this or talking about it and I ask people to put their hands up as to who believes that people resist change, uh, everybody raises their hand immediately. And, and so then I start ticking off um, – this is on an individual level, but I start asking, you know, how many people have you, how many people have uh, voluntarily gotten married or had kids or voluntarily changed jobs or even moved? And everybody keeps raising their hand. I said, if, here, here's, an, here's another example. If you're walking down the street and you saw uh, the winning lottery ticket uh, from the latest lottery, Laying, laying there in the middle of the street, no one else around, no one to find, no, no way to find out who it came from. But you know that this is a, you know, a 20 million euro lottery ticket. That's a huge change in your life. Are you going to resist picking up that lottery ticket and turning it in? And I think the answer is no. So I, I don't think that people uh, resist change. I think that people uh, re will resist change when it hasn't been sufficiently explained to them. Now, that's on an individual level. On a corporate level, it's a little bit different, but I think more similar than different in that uh, an organization should change, right? It, it's entirely possible that it wouldn't. If, it's, if the change is explained to them in a way that makes sense to their, to, um, their particular culture. So I talk differently to instructional designers than I do to say, and people working in knowledge management than I do to people sitting at the, the, the chief executive officer level, because not because, um, primarily because they're operating in different cultures. The CEO and the CFO have different cultural responsibilities than, than people in different parts of the organizations. And so I think, when you're talking about getting people to embrace change, you have to first understand the culture that they're going to have to try to do that in and understanding the, the kind of pain points in their organ in, in that culture for them and couching that explanation of how the change is going to help them um, in a way that makes sense within that culture. So if I'm talking to a CEO, I might talk about increasing collaboration as a way to um, gain competitive competitive advantage over somebody. But if I'm talking to a divisional manager, he doesn't really care about com competitive, competitive advantage. He's got a different culture around them that says, I have to maximize my employees' productivity within this division. And so I'm going to explain the change differently to them. So I think the first thing is we can't settle on a, a one-size-fits-all explanation of why collaboration is going to be beneficial. We have to adjust our explanations, not by being mm, what false or disingenuous, but we have to just change the terms of the, dis of the discussion to ones that makes sense within someone's culture. If that makes any sense.